Hello people from the internet, this is Zero Dev. Yes, I'm not dead, I'm just a lazy person and I have the YouTube video schedule fucked up. But anyway, today we're working on a new project, specifically a platformer in pixel art style. But since I'm working on the game sprites, today I'll show you how you can use an animation player with your own stage machine. This is not a tutorial. I don't really know how to use the animation tree too well. So this probably isn't a perfect video to learn more about it specifically. Starting off, we have three steps. The first one is to create your animations. This means that after you create your sprites with programs like a sprite or something like that, you'd wanna go to Godot, create an animation sprite 2D, an animation player, and an animation 3. You're going to select the animated sprite 2D and create your own animation. You don't really need to choose the frame rate or the loop for your animation here, because I'll also show you how you can change the animation speed later. After that, you'll do the same thing, but with the animation player. You're going to select the animation from the animated sprite 2D, select the snap at 0.1, make a keyframe for the current animation, and then for each frame in the animation, plus 0.1 more. So if the animation is 2 seconds total, you'll make it 2.1 seconds long. The second step is to use the animation tree connected to the animation player and create all the needed connections for the animation. So if you want more customization, you can create a blend space instead of importing just the animation and import the animation inside the blend space, connect it to a time scale and then to the output. Like this, you can change via script the animation speed should you need it. If you want to, you can also put at the end of the animation, in the animation player, a signal connected to a function in the script where you can do some other stuff. For example, if you're making some attacks and you want to stop the player to attack while it's already attacking, you can make a variable false to stop and connect the end of the animation to another function to change it. Now that you have all of the animation ready, hopefully it's time to make all the necessary script. What I did was to create an enum with all of the states and in my case, for now at least, the attacks are all under a single attack state, but I'll probably make another video for that. Then we set the animation playback as a variable connected to the animation tree parameters playback, so you can access the animations and speed values. I've actually made a different script everyone can call that handles the state changes. For that I just made the script, from that we set a variable that checks who's the parent and we go like, if the momentary state is different than the new state, then the current state will be the new state, and the old state will be the momentary state, and the momentary state will be the new state. Yes. Then you just have to make a function in whatever script you have to manage the animation, that will get the signal whatever the state changes, and give the appropriate animation if you need. You may notice that some animation may be all funky when connected to each other. You'll just have to tweak a few stuff here and there in the animation tree if you didn't tinker too much with the script. And that's pretty much it! It's pretty easy once you figure out how your settings may work for your use case, but generally this method seems to work pretty nicely. And if you have another way to make this way more efficiently, you can text me in the comments below. So yeah, if you liked the video, you can like and subscribe. And hopefully the next video won't come too late <laughs> this time.